Aegon the Conqueror, Aegon the first of his name, Aegon the Dragon, arguably the most iconic legendary figure in the world of A Song of Ice and Fire. It was always inevitable that the Conqueror would get his own series, and to be honest, it was by far the most requested. And it seems like this will come to pass, as Pattinson's Batman, writer Mattson Tomlin, will be writing the new series, which is set 300 years before the reign of Daenerys Targaryen. Aegon the Conqueror was the first Targaryen king in Westeros. He rode Beleriand the Black Dread, the largest dragon in the realm. And alongside his sister wives, Rhaenys and Visenya, they conquered six out of the seven kingdoms in Westeros. Of course, minus Dorne, which comes part of the realm much later on. Remember, Rhaenys rode Meraxes and Visenya rode Vagar, the largest dragon by the time of House of the Dragon. The three Targaryen siblings conquered six kingdoms and forged the Iron Throne and formed a dynasty that would last until the Mad King. So I'm very hyped for this. But for some reason, we're going back to basics, whatever that means. I think it will be faithful to the source material, both in the Song of Ice and Fire volumes, but also the expanded universe. Because George R. Martin has went quite a bit into the history of the Conqueror and his dragon dreams, which I will discuss very shortly. But I'm not too sure what they mean when he goes back to basics. House of the Dragon itself is pretty basic. And George R. R. Martin has become more and more involved in the TV shows, including the ones that have been greenlit and the ones still in active development. And of course, lots of people are going to start screaming that we're never going to get those final books. And for me, the prequels are awesome. I love Game of Thrones on the screen. But we all want a conclusion to one of the greatest fantasy stories ever told. But in terms of The Conqueror, there's been lots of talks and reports for a while now. Initially, Variety mentioned it, but now this has come from The Hollywood Reporter and James Hibbard, who has close ties to HBO, and I believe it was him that broke the Snow sequel a couple years ago, was it? But so far, HBO have not commented. This Aegon the Conqueror series is not greenlit just yet, but the dragons are coming. House of the Dragon was a huge success. Season 2 is coming this summer. I believe season 3 and 4 in the works, and that will conclude the Dance of the Dragons. And there's been lots of talk about House of the Dragon becoming a jumping off point, both into the past and the future. Obviously Aegon Targaryen is basically the star of the series, and of course Duncan Egg happens later on, after the dragons have died. But I think the future for A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones is mostly going to be told on screen. And it seems like House Targaryen are the main focus, because you can argue they're the most iconic and popular house in the entire series. And you've probably seen it now, there was recent foes about the Long Night prequel, that was the very first one they actively done. Was it Naomi Watts was part of it, she was probably going to be a Lannister, and it was going to involve a Casterly and Stark wedding. This is all set 8,000 years ago, and the origin of the White Walker seems to be the main plotline. But that was cancelled, $35 million later, and it was scrapped. And HBO seeked out Fire and Blood, and greenlit House of the Dragon. And Duncan Egg, because Egg becomes the future king, Aegon V. And that's set after the dragons have died, and deals with the aftermath of the Blackfire Rebellion. Another story I think many people want to see. The history of House Targaryen and Westeros as a whole is so rich and vast. But of course, we can't make a TV show on everything. But as for Aegon's conquest, will it be under the House of the Dragon banner? Will it be labelled House of the Dragon, Aegon's Conquest, or Aegon the Conqueror? Or just House of the Dragon Conquest? But I think it will tie directly into House of the Dragon. It's basically a prequel to that, and it would not surprise me if we get some sort of Rhaenyra monologue very similar to the start of House of the Dragon when she recites the story of the old king choosing a new heir with a council at Harrenhal. We might get Emma Darcy back for that, maybe Matt Smith, or even push the boat out, get Amelia Clark back for a monologue or even a flashback to her reading about her ancestors. Which means we're going to hear more about Aegon's dragon dream, which he named the Song of Ice and Fire, which is all about the return of the others, the White Walkers, and the prince that was promised, who Aegon believed would come from his line, and that's why he conquered Westeros. So expect to see Aegon's dagger show up, and we'll learn more about his dragon dreams of the long night to come, which King Viserys told Rhaenyra that the knowledge was passed from the king to the heir. And I believe the conquest took about three years to complete, so you could probably do this in maybe two or three seasons. I don't think one's enough, but I think anything more than three would just be far too bloated. 
I imagine we'll get some before, especially in the first episode, which will explain the Doom of Valyria, which is another prequel we all want to see. We'll also see how the Targaryens escaped the Doom and ended up on Dragonstone. A younger Aegon who dreams of the Long Night and then straight into the Conquest itself. Get this done in two or three seasons. We'll get the burning of Harrenhal, where Beleriand tortures the largest castle in the realm, the Field of Fire, against House Gardner and House Lannister, which is the only time all three dragons were unleashed at once, and that is the true definition of fire and blood. And as for the White Walkers, I believe they're going to show up in Season 2 in House of the Dragon, or at least be hinted at, and I think we'll get a vision of the Night King either blurred, or maybe just his silhouette in the Conquest series, or maybe just his eyes. I think we'll physically see Aegon's dream, the Song of Ice and Fire, and perhaps he sees the prince that was promised hundreds of years down the line. Whether that's Daenerys Targaryen, whether that's Jon Snow, or it's left ambiguous, we will see. And of course there'll be so much more. Many bloody battles and what results in the forging of the Iron Throne, from the swords of Aegon's fallen enemies who bent the knee. But the question is, who should play the Conqueror and his sister wives? Many names have been thrown into the mix. Of course Henry Cavill's been mentioned many times as the Conqueror himself. Anya Taylor-Joy as Rainies, I've heard that one. Catherine Winnick from Vikings as Visenya. Dozens more. Basically, if you're good looking, you've got long silver hair, or you do well in a wig, or if you fit the bill and you've done anything fantasy in the past. But I think just like with House of the Dragon, and even Game of Thrones itself, we're not going to expect any Hollywood A-listers, or even popular fan castings, or people who have appeared in similar roles in other shows. Guys, I'm a big Henry Cavill fan, but I don't think it's going to happen. And to be honest, after he departed The Witcher, I don't think many studios are going to be keen to cast him in long-running TV shows. Apart from the Warhammer series, which he's working on, and that definitely has me intrigued. I think we'll see a very similar casting process to House of the Dragon, where you might get one out of the three who might be on maybe Matt Smith's level of being famous, if you know what I mean. Maybe known for one or two major roles, but not a superstar, but a fine actor. And if you go back to the casting of Daemon Targaryen, when Matt Smith was first announced, there was a lot of backlash because he wasn't who the fans wanted, or at least a portion of them. But we could argue once the episodes dropped, once episode 1 aired, we saw the truth. He was one of the best parts of the show, especially in the first few episodes. And I've got faith in the casting department. For this Game of Thrones cinematic universe, if you want to call it that. I did say one day we'll get a movie, and I still think that might happen. The dragons on the big screen, big money. And Aegon's Conquest was my pick, but it seems like this is going to be a TV show. But then again, who wants to release a movie costing $250 million, especially nowadays? It might be in the best interest for Game of Thrones to stick to the small screen for now. But guys, make sure you post your thoughts on this Egg on the Conquest TV show and give me your fan casting, no matter how crazy they are. And also, let me know what other TV shows in the Game of Thrones universe you want to see. For me, it's got to be Robert Sabellian. George R. R. Martin has said it's not going to happen because... We're going to see everything after Game of Thrones and his books, so there'll be no big surprises. But I don't think that matters. It'll have a great story, top action, and iconic characters, such as Ned Stark, Robert Baratheon, Tywin and Jaime Lannister, Sir Arthur Dane. And I, for one, would not rule this out. I think HBO will do Robert's Rebellion, or at least try to convince George to make it. And yeah, the Snow sequel, which is meant to be about Jon Snow after he kills Daenerys and then goes up north. As long as it's a good story and done for the right reasons. But my question is, will George R. R. Martin allow them to go beyond his books? I think he's keen for prequels and other companion stories, but in terms of direct sequels or anything beyond the main timeline, not so sure. But it's an exciting time. We have lots to look forward to in the Game of Thrones and a Song of Ice and Fire universe. And if you want to get more, make sure you subscribe to get it. We've been doing Game of Thrones on this channel for about eight years now, and we ain't stopping. But guys, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.